Look what my little brother made for me for Christmas. Isn't that great? A special Christmas cookie to everyone who can tell me what each one of those images represents. Hello to you dwellers and Merry Christmas. I'm the Arcadian and this is Mabinogidul. A short episode for everyone today, as I'm assuming the most of you are still recovering from Christmas celebrations, and for those of you who don't celebrate Christmas, well, please bear with the rest of us. So, we'll just have uh, one fight today, I think, and it's going to be with a very silly little Christmassy themed deck. As you can see, one of the cards is, in fact, yes, Gift Stocking. A card I don't advise anyone to ever use in any situation at any time, but... Hey, it's Christmas. So we'll take a look at the deck very, very quickly. First of all, we have the leopard. Now, not very Christmassy, I'm aware, but it does have four legs and it's the closest I could get to a reindeer. So, leopard. Uh, just imagine him pulling Santa's sleigh. It's fine, it's fine. Next is the lie detector. If it comes up, there we go. Lie detector, because Santa knows when you've been good and he knows when you've been bad. There's no lying to Santa. Next is Penguin, because of course, wherever you think that Santa lives, North Pole, South Pole, Iceland, Finland, I'm not sure, I don't, they, no penguins in Finland, no penguins in most of the places I mentioned, but nevertheless, you think of snow, right? And when you think of snow, you also think of penguins, and adorable penguin is adorable, so, penguin. Next is the Book of Knowledge, Santa's big book of knowledge, he knows everything after all, I hope everyone was good. And uh, unless you needed the coal, of course, you know, it feels expensive these days. Magic Missile. Again, not massively Christmassy, but it's magic. It's got magic right in the name, so come on. Magic Missile. Next is Imp, because Santa needs his little uh, elves and pixies and things making those toys. I'm not entirely sure what the Imp is making, but somebody's going to have a good Christmas. Then we have Lady Chair. Again, not herself very Christmassy, but look at that art. Isn't that nice? That is nice art. And it's Lady Share, and I got a soft spot for all the shares. Up next is Heavy Offering. Really, just because it's got the word offering in the name, that's close enough to a present, right? I mean, I'm not sure who'd want Calamus as a gift, but uh, it's the thought that counts, even if the thought is vaguely psychotic. Then, of course, the gift stocking when destroyed increases the HP of the creature with the lowest HP by between 1 and 7. I'm not sure why you'd ever need this, but it is the most Christmassy card I own, so it's in the deck. Then we have flame emission, because if you squint and close your eyes a little bit and peer at it, it kind of looks like a Christmas cracker. Kind of looks like the guy's pulling just a really big Christmas cracker, right? It's not just me, right? Eh. Flame emission. And... Automata Turk, because again, making of the presents, making of the gifts, and uh, yeah, I can see Santa using Automata Turk, right? He looks, I mean, that, that would make sense as a kind of a, an overseer for the presents factory, I think. And finally, we have Witch Xena, because Santa won't come unless you're asleep, and Xena's here to help with that. So that's the sort of kind of Christmassy deck. Uh, it's not supposed to be used in seriousness. It's, I mean, it's fine. It's perfectly okay. It would get you into gold without any difficulty, but I wouldn't advise trying to take it into the top 10. This is just for a little bit of fun. That being said, let's dive into our first and only fight of the day and see exactly how well it does. Okay, first fight against Balkan Beager, I think. Apologies if I got your name wrong. Using the Sarah hero, which is nice to see. Mana, Nature, and Dark, with one mutant it looks like. So, we will open up with the Penguin, because nobody expects the Penguin. And let's see what she does. I assume she's going to answer with a defensive creature of her own, an elf, or a hyena king, or something like that. Uh, but that's okay, because the elf, uh, the not the elf, or the hyena king, the Penguin can take a lot of damage. And, okay, so it's an elf. That's, uh, that makes sense. We'll use the Book of Knowledge. That gets us up to being able to level up to two. Now, between the elf and the penguin, the penguin will always lose that fight, unfortunately, but it does take the elf a while to punch through the penguin's uh, defense and HP value, so we're actually okay. All right, so she discards into nature, which means we've got a cocoon trap or uh, ambush vine or hidden spider. 
Uh, could be anything, really. There's no anticipating with this deck so far. Poisonous Spear. Wow. Okay. I don't see that. And that uh, that kills our Penguin off a little earlier than we were expecting, which is unfortunate, but so it goes. Now, uh, if it's an Ambush Vine, we need to be aware of that as a possibility, but we can bait that out with a Turk because he doesn't care. And it is an Ambush Vine. Okay, so Turk doesn't care uh, because uh, Turk's purpose is not to hit the hero. Uh, Turk's purpose is to flood the field. Now I think we'll block the elf off with our leopard because this feels like a chip damage deck to me and the uh, best way of preventing that from doing what it wants to do is just to block all incoming damage in the early game. Uh, with a deck like ours anyway. I mean a lot of a lot of decks with heavier creatures can just sort of take the shots at the beginning and uh, and make up for it at the end especially if they're using a healing hero but we're not. Okay, so Turk summons an assassin. That's actually pretty cool. I quite like assassin. You don't use him normally, but as a summon from Turk, that's pretty good. It makes it very difficult for the opponent to block, because if they deal with the assassin, they can't really put a creature down in front of it. Um, but if they use a removal spell, then that's one less removal spell that they can use on Turk. So... So we're in a pretty good position here, honestly. The Leopard will kill the Elf. Uh, Turk can just keep taking those shots, no problem, and summoning more creatures out onto the field. So we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, and she's thinking about it. Mm, Ice Spear. Okay, yeah, that is a problem. Uh, so that will kill the Leopard, but will won't kill Turk, but it will drop his attack value, which means we've now got to ramp that all the way back up again. Oh, okay, we don't get the opportunity. She just death sentences the Turk. That's unfortunate, but it was two cards that she used to basically just remove Turk because we don't care too much about the Leopard. It does allow four damage to come through onto us, and we're not doing brilliantly right now, so uh, probably want to revive out of the grave and get some of our cards back. Now, we could try to go for some direct damage with an imp or something like that, but again, in the spirit of blocking off chip damage decks while we build back up towards Turk and Xena, uh, we'll place the leopard down in front of the elf. She has so far appeared to be pretty defensive of the elf. She seems to be quite worried about us killing it, so this, is, this will be interesting. We also kind of a test to see if she goes for the leopard. She's thinking about it. She is thinking about it. Turn to frog. Interesting. Okay, so she is really, really worried about us killing that elf. She does not want that elf in the grave. So this could be some sort of buff deck. Keep the small creatures out onto the field until you're ready to buff them up and then go for it. But normally for a buff deck, you'd expect to see gold or light. I'm not honestly sure of any buffs beyond the Phantom of the Wolf in uh, nature or mana or dark. Hmm. So, because the blocking didn't work, we've played the imp. Let's see how she deals with that. She deals with it with a vampire, which is pretty effective. But we can take care of that entire row with a flame emission and a magic missile onto the vampire. So, if we discard the gift stocking, <coughs> sorry, that's going in the grave. Uh, we'll throw out the flame emission. That takes out those two nature cards, and the magic missile puts the vampire within... Uh, lethal range of the imp, giving us 10 damage on the board and leaving her with very, very little mana and dark, although she does have nature. So she could bring out that, I think she might be about to, she could bring out that poison spear again, but that's actually okay if she does, because that would take her down to virtually, uh, well, they're taking down to two mana, one dark, and zero nature. So we'd be all right with that. And there's a poison spear. Okay, good, good. Uh, it's unfortunate that we lose that 10 damage. That would have been really nice. But I think she's beginning to feel the pressure. And she's taken herself down really, really low in resources, which is great for us. So let's put a little bit more pressure on by dropping share. Because she doesn't have enough resources in hand to summon any of the creatures we've seen so far. Unfortunately, she got 2 HP off that, which is not great. But... If Cher can go unchallenged, or if she tries to block the assassin, this could be quite interesting. Because most people don't expect the assassin, they, they never see it, and they don't really understand how its effect works. 
but even if they do, they kind of they 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 kind of assume that the attack value is at five, which is is not. It's a three because she lowered it, and now, pow, excellent. So because the assassin's effect happened first, share's effect happened second, and she transforms because at her point there's no creatures on the field. So we can just charge up now and get an unblockable thirteen damage off on her, taking her down to five HP, which is really really good because she's got to block both creatures now. She can't just block one or the other. And she concedes, wow, okay, so the deck actually came through. Due in large part to Turk summoning that assassin. Interesting stuff. And that was the Christmas deck. <laughs> I hope everybody had a really good Christmas, or if you don't celebrate it, just a really good 25th of December. Hey, it doesn't need to be a special holiday in order for you to have fun, right? Uh, sorry, no duels right now. But you're in the video, so Merry Christmas! Uh, I did pretty well out of it. I mean, amongst other things, you saw the uh, the, the drawing. I said, <laughs> I said no. You saw the drawing that my uh, little brother did, which was fantastic. And again, I know you're watching, Mikey, so thank you. I really, really love it. Uh, but amongst, uh, that, well, along with that and amongst other things, uh, I also got a green screen. So expect to see me having some fun with that in coming videos. Aha. Uh, so, yes, as far as the deck goes, as always, if you would, for some reason, like to try it out yourself, uh, there's, the, there's, the share, there's the share code. There's the share code up in the top right-hand corner of the screen, uh, copied into your, into your uh, game. And if you do decide to run it, let me know how it goes. Uh, pretty interested to see what other people do with it. So, that's it from me. Uh, thank you to everybody for watching, and a special thank you to everyone who subscribed so far. Until next time, have fun, and good luck.